So I hope all of you have listened to the previous session on communication, which is the fourth element of directing. Now, this topic is a very different topic and it is something that we all know, but we fail to understand that we know this particular topic. So in the last session, the topics that we discussed was the meaning and the definition of communication, the elements of communication, the importance of communication, the different uh, types of communication that's formal and informal communication. So this topic, which we are going to discuss today, is going to be an eight marker and it is a very important topic. I've tried as much as possible to include pictures and to under make you understand with a lot of examples. So please ensure that you this session is going to be very important for you and you are ensuring to make notes while I'm going to teach you this particular topic. So if you look in front of you, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe so that you can share it with your friends. Also share the videos with your friends also, and it would be helpful for others for them to learn as well. And it would be easy for you also to get the updates as and when I'm uploading the videos. OK, so the topic that you see friend of you is the topic that we are going to study. OK, now you see that there is a person across the wall and there are so many people across this side of the wall. Now, let's say this person who is in red is trying to speak. Now, let's say I'm the person in red and you are the person in blue. I'm saying across the wall. Hey, how are you? Where are you? And you are the people who are in blue. Now tell me, will you be able to understand what am I telling you? You will say, no, I'm not able to understand. Can you please repeat yourself? So again, I say, hey, how are you? How do you do? Do you know where are you? So again, you say, no, I'm not able to hear you. What are you saying? So what is it when you communicate to people? There are certain barriers that come along your way, just like how this wall is a barrier. Just like the wall is a barrier like that, there are some people who come as barriers when you communicate. So the topic that we are going to be learning today is called barriers to communication. So one person one day told me communication is not what you speak. It is what the other person understands. So I was actually wondering what is this person telling me? Communication is not what you speak. It is what the other person understands. So yeah, that is actually true, right? So if I'm going to tell you like hundreds of things at the same time and you will not be able to understand even one single thing, probably in those hundred sentences, you will only remember one important sentence or one just one word you would remember. So what is it? It is not what you speak, but it's what the other person is able to understand and what he feels is important is what he will take. So that is the reason lectures are mostly kept for like 20 minutes in a class or probably 40 minutes in a class because the child's concentration is not very long. OK, the child cannot concentrate very long. So that's the reason they're given breaks, probably 10 minutes in between. OK, so same way. Why? Because communication will be lost. Then there are a lot of things that will actually affect the communication in between. Probably your friends talking, probably you getting distracted, probably outside noises. All these are the things. So specific items that can distort. Distort means what disturb or prevent communication within the organization is what is called the barriers of communication. And this is a very interesting topic and a very, very important eight marker. Now, how is the eight marker broken? Now, if you actually see here, semantic barrier and organizational barrier, these two topics will come as a four marker. Again, I repeat, semantic barrier and organizational barrier will come for a four marker. Psychological barrier and personal barrier, they'll ask you for a two marker. So that is how you're going to learn this topic. And what is the meaning of the word barriers to communication? It is who faces barrier, I'll tell you. So in an organization, the manager faces a lot of these problems because the manager is not able to communicate properly. Not that his English is not good. It is that there are several disturbances and there are several things that comes across when he is trying to communicate to his subordinates. Probably there is disturbance from the top level management asking him to finish some work because of that he uh, he is communicating half and half information. So because of which there's a lot of misunderstandings that's created within the uh, organization or within the team. So what are those kind of barriers which is affecting the manager and the subordinates is what is called as barriers to 
communication. So the first one, if you are actually seeing here, is semantic barrier. Semantic barrier refers to linguistic words. Linguistic words refers to language, okay? The language what we are using. Again, I'll tell you, semantic barrier refers to linguistic words and sentences. That is the language in which we are communicating, the way in which we are speaking, okay? Now here, again, semantic barriers has points below it. Next is psychological barrier. Psychological refers to your mind, okay? The way you are thinking, that is the both, that is the sender and the receiver. You may tell one thing, the other person may perceive whatever you are thinking in a very different manner. That's what is called as psychological barrier. Organizational barrier refers to all the organization structure. Do you remember the functional structure and the divisional structure? Yes, so that is what there are a lot of rules, a lot of regulations, a lot of departments, a lot of things there in the organization which disturbs the manager and his subordinates. The last one is the personal barrier. Personal barrier refers to the manager and his subordinates, the relationship but that both of them share. So that is what is these barriers to communication. So if you actually see, semantic barrier is a four marker and organizational barrier is a four marker. So the psychological barrier is a two marker and the personal barrier is a two marker. Probably if they change I have uh, put their marks in the next topic, you can see. Now, you see Humpty Dumpty here on the screen? Yeah, I'm sure you would remember it as your nursery rhyme. So what is a semantic barrier? So again, semantic barrier is a four marker, okay? Now, if you see Humpty Dumpty is sitting on the wall, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, okay? What does it say? Sit. Instead of saying sat on the wall, he sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Three scores men, okay? What is the rhyme we have learned it? Now, I forgot the rhyme that we learned, okay? Uh, all the men's horses and all the men's, um, yeah, all the men's couldn't put Humpty back together again. That's what uh, I probably learned. But what does it say here? Three score men and three score more cannot place Humpty Dumpty as he was before. Is Do you remember this rhyme? No, I don't remember learning this rhyme this way. So this is what is called a semantic barrier. What is it? The language that is being inserted or being used is very difficult for the other person to understand. It is causing problems and obstructions in encoding and decoding. Remember, encoding and decoding. Decoding means the sender is sending one message. Okay, whatever message the sender is sending, the receiver has to interpret or decode the message okay so there is a problem in this so the person who's written the rhyme is not written the rhyme properly for me to read it and understand the rhyme properly so what is happening the branch of linguistic the language the choice of words the sentences that is being used is causing problems and obstruction in encoding and decoding so by the time i read this humpty dumpty rhyme i have forgotten the correct rhyme that i have learned that is what is called as somatic barriers yes i'm sure it is very useful and it, i'm sure you remember all these things there are many times we've re read a lot of letters and we were like what is this this girl has written what is this boy is written i don't really understand what this teacher is teaching so that that's what is called semantic barriers when you're using the wrong words wrong faulty language wrong spellings it becomes very difficult person to interpret now what are the uh, headings below semantic barriers types of semantic barriers okay now these are the ones okay say words with different meaning bad expressions technical jargons denotation and connotations then unclarified assumptions and faulty translation now if you see the first one is badly expressed message just look at the color words okay it says Badly expressed message means what? Remember your manager? Your manager is not really good in using the correct vocabulary. And do you remember in my last session I told you I had a manager who used to always speak in, uh, he used to be, he used to be very strong in his mother tongue, okay? Let's say, for example, he was, a, let's say he was a, let's say, Punjabi. So, since he was a Punjabi, he used to be so strong in speaking his Hindi that when he spoke English, I could only hear, feel that he's speaking Punjabi to me. Where it used to not feel that I'm able to understand the message that he is conveying. Why? Because of his wrong choice of vocabulary and the usage of wrong words. That is what is called as badly expressed messages. 
Next one is symbols with different meanings. Now, what is it? Come back to the example here. Do you see this? When we say the symbol, it means that, whoa, excellent. That is what it means in, uh, let's say, Indian language or Indian English. But in Japan, when you show this three fingers this way and your uh, pointer finger and your thumb closed in, it says in Japan, it means money. In UK and US, it means you're, it's okay. In Russia, it means zero. In Brazil, it means insult. So what does it mean? A word or a symbol which has different meanings, okay? Now, we will not look anywhere else apart from here. Directly, we'll come to this example. Do you see the word value? The word value is used in three different sentences. But the word value has different meanings. It's the same word, okay? But when it is used in three sentences, it it's the the word itself changes. the The value for that word itself changes. Example: What is the value of this ring? When I'm asking what is the value of the ring, I'm asking you what is the rate you paid for the ring, or how much did you pay for the ring? That is what I'm asking you in the first sentence, okay? I value our friendship. I value our friendship refers to the love and bond that we are sharing as friends. That is what friendship, the word value here refers to. The third sentence is, what is the value of learning computer skills? You will find that value. Now, what is the value of learning computer skills refers to the skill and the knowledge in this word called value. So if you see all these three sentences, the word value has very different meaning, okay? If the person is using this word value in a very wrong sense, what happens? The entire sentence becomes a jumbled sentence and the receiver, that's the manager and the subordinate which have a lot of problems in between them. That is why words, symbols with different meanings should always be interpreted or conveyed properly by the manager or by the subordinate. Okay, so I'm, I'm really, uh, I hope that you are able to understand whatever I'm telling you. The third one is faulty translation. Word itself is telling you faulty translation. Example what? Let's say you don't understand Spanish and I only, uh, that you only understand English and I understand Spanish very well, okay? I'm communicating to you in Spanish and you are communicating to me in English. You are asking me, did you have lunch in English? And I'm asking you, no, 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 no. I did not have lunch. I'm telling you in Spanish. But you are thinking, oh, very good. You had lunch. Okay, very good. So it's okay. You don't eat. I will eat. That is what? So what am I thinking? I'm thinking that you are you in Spanish is convincing me, telling, oh, I had really good lunch. You carry on eating. So you being you being an Indian, you understand your English and you're understanding the way he's communicating Spanish. So you have your meal very well in front of him. And that Spanish person will be thinking this person person is least bother of offering me even little food. So what does it mean? When you are not able to understand certain language and when you try speaking that language and when you try convincing the other person in the language that you do not know, what happens? There is a quarrel between the worker and the management. So sometimes the communication originally drafted is in one language, that is English. And it needs to be translated in another language to the workers, that is Hindi. So, what happens? The person in between us, like example, I will tell you, I was working for a, a client, that is, it, it was a Mexican process, Mexico. So, this particular process, there in Mexico, the client who came to train us on the process, uh, that is, the client in Mexico, people, the first language is Spanish. And the second language is English. So the client who came to teach us the process, the process which we had to learn in India, was uh, very excellent in Spanish, but very zero in English. But we Indians, we were excellent in English and zero in Spanish. So to bridge the gap between both of us, the organization started hiring Spanish-speaking people, translators, okay? So this particular translator was the communicator between the client and us. 
so what happens was every time the client used to speak in spanish the translator used to understand and speak to uh, tell us in english and we whatever doubts we used to ask he used to in turn speak to that spanish people and translate it in spanish so what happens there was certain difficulty that both of us that is the um, spanish speaking people felt and we indians felt reason because there were certain things that the translator was not communicating properly so in the at the end of the day we could not learn the process properly for us to do the work but still we try doing the job to the best of our ability so that is the reason if the translator is not proficient that means if the translator doesn't know spanish it is very difficult for the both the parties to understand the communication so that's the meaning of faulty translation the fourth one is unclarified assumptions what is unclarified assumptions there are certain uh, things let let's say a manager is telling okay there is a client who's come from the us your manager is telling you you know what you are the one who's supposed to take care of our guest what do you understand by this sentence take care of our guest in an mnc organization whenever your manager is telling you you are supposed to take care of the guest that means from the starting of uh, leaving the person in the uh, let's say in the five star hotel booking a five star hotel going and dropping the person to the in the five star hotel to next day ensuring that he is picked up in the uh, probably the mercedes benz or bmw and then brought into your organization that is your duty okay why because the client is very important for you because of the client only there's business in india happening so that is the reason you need to take care of the client very well that is the meaning of the term take care of your guest that's what your manager is telling you but what do you understand by take care of the guest you feel that okay take care of the guest means i need to pick him at the airport and just drop him at his hotel in yeah that's it Five star hotel. That's what you you understand. So what is this? That's unclarified assumption. When your manager is communicating something important to you, he needs to make you understand that this is what I mean by take care of your guest. Okay, so that you will not interpret the wrong thing. You will interpret the correct thing, and you will be able to do it. Now the fifth one is technical jargons. jargons are words which have different meanings but these are technical words which everybody cannot understand now let's say in english i use the terminology called sophisticated you are very sophisticated now when i ask my students what is the meaning of this word called sophisticated they will say me ma'am i think it is getting i'm feeling very hot or i think it's a very hot day i feel i'm suffocating within inside I always ask my girls when I teach this, what's the meaning of the word sophisticated? Then they say, "Ma'am, I'm suffocating. I think I'm going to die. I think this is what is the mean." That I'm I'll tell them. See, sophisticated means you are very complicated as a person for me to understand you. Okay, that is things are very complicated around me. I don't know. It's a very sophisticated process. It's a very sophisticated job. You are a you are a, a very sophisticated person. So what does it mean? Complicated. It's not that you are suffocating without breath. Okay. So these are technical jargons. Which these are words which people will not really understand. Not everybody will be able to understand. So like that. Let's say you're a person who doesn't know any computer language, and I come and tell you, you know what's COBOL? Do you know what C++? Do you know what's Java programming? Do you know that HTML formula that you have to use? Ah, huh, please end up doing that work. You'll be wondering, what is this person really trying to teach me or tell me? That is what is called as technical jargons. It is nothing but these are specialists or people who know all these words. They have studied it either through their education or through their experience. They have learnt all these words, and not all of them will be knowing all these things. So look at here. She he says she was on cloud nine after the results were declared. Doesn't mean that she's really sitting on cloud nine. It means that she was so happy. that she's performed really well that it she feels like she's oh superior and great but the way he is communicating he is communicating in a slang telling that she feels on she is cloud 9 so the other person's like huh i don't understand what you're saying so that is what means by technical jargon it doesn't really mean that everybody will be able to understand the communicating uh, words what you are using the next one is body language and gesture coding Now what is this body language and gesture coding 
the way you say something your body language doesn't really mean it like example i'm going to tell you i'm just walking cool i'm turning towards the board okay imagine me turning towards the board blackboard and i'm just writing something telling that uh, tomorrow you have a test but i'm not writing it on the board literally i'm just telling it tomorrow you have a test does it make sense to you it will not really make sense to you and tomorrow if i come and literally give you a test you will get zero on the test why because my body language and the gestures the way i was telling it literally did not mean one and the same when i'm telling you you have a test tomorrow i have to look straight at you i should ensure that my body language is stiff enough so that you ensure to understand that yes this person is very strict enough in telling me i do have a test so you will be able to understand what i am telling so same thing in an organization when your manager is trying to communicate something to you you need to understand through his body language and gestures gesture is nothing but the way he is moving his hands the way he is sitting the way he is having eye contact with you so that you are able to understand what he is telling the second one is psychological barrier psychological barrier is a two marker two marker means learn any three or four points that's more than enough along with your explanation psychological barrier as i told you it refers to your state of mind okay now state of mind i have again underlined the terminology state of mind of the sender and the receiver of communication if it reflects what lack of attention premature evaluation poor retention loss by transmission distrust and emotions now what is this psychological directly i'll move in so that you'll be able to understand easy premature evaluation what is premature evaluation do you look at these uh, pictures it says that evaluating the meaning of the message before the sender completes his message example your friend let's say your manager send you a message on your phone telling that tomorrow please be here at 9 o'clock but it's okay if you're going to be there at 10 o'clock there's an important meeting you have to attend you are only reading the message tomorrow there's a very important meeting but you forget to read the message that you have to be present at 9 o'clock now what is it that's nothing but premature evaluation even before you are reading the message correctly tomorrow you just know, need to know that you have to be present but you don't know that you have to be present at 9 o'clock that is what is called as premature evaluation like see the lady even before the boy can speak she assumes that the boy needs a new toy okay so what is it you need to give a permission for the receiver for the speaker to speak complete his message only then you can bounce back or uh, speak about that particular person the second one is lack of attention what does it mean do you listen, do you see here she is speaking to the particular subordinate or the person and he is like blah 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 he is probably sleeping so what is happening here she doesn't even know if the person is paying attentive or attention to whatever she is saying okay so what happens the uh, vice versa okay even when the manager is so busy and the employee says hey can i have a minute to speak to you i want to tell you something important your manager is between a meeting and he says yeah yeah you i can yeah yeah please come and speak to me and then your manager is continuously over the call and he says yeah yeah you speak you speak i'm listening i'm listening tell me as a subordinate as an employee will you feel happy to speak no why because the um, your boss or your manager is not paying attentive to what you are speaking that is what is called as lack of attention that means it relates to the state of mind between the sender and the receiver even if one is not attentive in your message what you are speaking then the person will not be interested in speaking to you the third one is loss by transmission and poor retention example today tomorrow you have a problem you go and tell that to your manager after 2 3 days you you have taken a leave and then your manager messages you and calls you you don't pick the call next day he is so furious at you and he tells you why can't you just pick my call i just called you right and that time you said i two days back i just sent you a message i even came to your uh, desk and informed you that i would be taking a leave it's an emergency and then what happens he realizes that yes you have spoken to him so what is happening when a subordinate is speaking or when a manager is speaking the receiver should be attentive let me that be a manager or let it be a subordinate they should pay attention to each other if they are not paying attentive to each other they will forget whatever message is being transmitted or uh, when they are speaking especially in oral communication like example see here 
the boss is telling to rohit telling that if you happen to meet rohit sorry this is not rohit rohit is another third person okay so boss is telling here if you actually meet rohit please tell him that the manager wanted to meet him so this lady is asking this fellow to inform rohit that the manager wants to meet him now this man in the center literally forgets that man uh, that rohit has to go meet the manager why because he is not paying attentive he does, he is not able to remember what she is saying he takes it for granted so that's what happens in most of the organizations why because managers have a lot of things to do but they still communication is very very important when it comes to uh, an organization the fourth one is distrust what is the meaning of the terminology called distrust distrust between communicator and communicates act as a barrier if parties do not believe like example you feel that somewhere your manager is cheating you and he is not giving the correct information to the top level management you may be a very good employee very good efficient but somewhere you feel that he has a partiality towards some other employees who is related to his own caste or religion so what is happening would you trust to tell him some important personal information about you no why because you don't have the basic trust on your manager which results in psychological barrier in an organization now coming down to organizational barriers organizational barriers please remember it refers to the organization structure that means it refers to all those rules regulations the hierarchies that you need to follow top level middle level lower level all the organizational facilities the complex that either they are following a functional structure either they are following a divisional structure all this is what is hampering the organizational uh, or organizational barrier that's between the employee and the subordinates you may ask me how like example i'll tell you if you have any problem in your organization if you are an employee who do you need to go to you need to follow the levels tell me want it sometimes just sometimes when you don't have proper team leaders who can actually assist you directly it will be better for you to go to your manager but what are you do supposed to do you are forced to follow the hierarchy by going to your team leader telling your team leader wait for your team leader go and tell it to the manager so these are barriers which affects effective communication between the subordinates and the management okay so is the third one that's organizational barrier this is a four marker please mark it important and please whenever uh, whenever i say organizational barrier your head should strike the organizational structure that's functional structure divisional structure if you've forgotten please go back to my previous videos and see what is functional structure and divisional structure because it's very important and you know that it relates to all the rules and regulations that's placed in the organization now what is the organizational policy that's nothing but rules and regulations who you have to go to who you have to report to all this is what hampers the organization there is no effective communication like you remember only during gang clang emergency situation you can go directly up to your manager and tell the problem otherwise you have to follow scalar chain so what is happening all these are policies which are laid and second one is rules and regulations what are these rules and regulation certain rules are so strict okay which is hampering the growth of the employees example what even on a friday employees are not able to wear a u neck t-shirt or let's say a proper um, shoes and certain employees in certain organization men cannot grow their hair but in certain organizations men can grow their hair they can come even in casuals and any other day from monday to fr uh, monday to thursday it's all welcome for them work is important employee whether coming just because employee can wear decent clothes but certain organizations follow certain rules so strictly where it curbs the employee and it, it employee feels very suffocated to work in such organizations so what is happening all this is what is uh, leading to organizational barriers in the growth of an employee third one is status status of superiors that means what see here let's say this girl is a manager and this boy is a uh, let's say subordinate 
okay the manager is telling yeah there are certain things a subordinate wants to go and tell the manager certain things but what does she say please can you go and address this problem to your team leader i have better work to do what is she doing she's putting up a status front of her why because she feels that oh she is a manager she has to be respected according to that he is supposed to follow those levels so what is happening employee is not really happy to work in such kind of organization and this again creates barriers to effective communication complexity in organizational structure what happens do you see this structure here let's say in every level there are two three bosses who you have to go through what happens is it a very easy organizational structure that you are following no so what is happening here communication is getting delayed distorted that means there's a lot of duplication and there is lot of complication in communication why because one message what you send tell to one manager you need to even inform the other manager too so there's a lot of delays in your communication because of the wrong organization structure that has been used you know organizational structure refers to functional structure and divisional structure then the last one is organizational facilities what is this organizational facilities now always the management should give an opportunity for the employees to work smoothly instead of keeping frequent uh, cultural gatherings and frequent meetings the whenever i used to work in these mnc companies sometimes i'll just wait to just finish my work and come home but sometimes most of uh, so these managers you will never know when they'll have to they'll want to keep a sudden meeting they'll just say come the team please come out we have to have a meeting and that meeting there there will not be hardly any information to be discussed and that meeting will only be there for some people few people but we will also be asked to go for that meeting where our production time of 1 hour and 2 hours will get wasted and then we have to stretch an extra 1 hour to complete our work or probably suddenly there's a social gathering which is happening and they will have a out a team lunch or a team dinner by which your work gets delayed so what is happening all these organizational facilities are indeed affecting the employees also so the last one is personal barrier personal barrier is the relationship that the subordinates and the management faces that is something that's within them okay because of which the super, superiors and the subordinates are struggling superiors again refers to the sender or the receiver or receiver or the sender vice versa now what is the first thing the first one is lack of confidence of superior on the subordinates that's again repetitive of your uh, uh, what's a psychological barrier that is i don't trust what my superior is telling i have a lack of trust and i then the superior says i don't trust what this employee is telling me that oh probably his mother is not well probably his family is struggling i don't trust why because there'll be some there'll be pro, there'll be situations where that confidence is not there you don't have confidence on what your team leader is telling you the team leader doesn't have confidence on what you are telling why because there's no proper uh, communication that's happening between y'all okay the second one is unwillingness to communicate that means what you perceive that it may adversely affect their interest that whose interest the subordinates may not be prepared to communicate with their super superiors if they perceive that perceive means you are imagining you are thinking example every day you are walking in late into your work your workplace but in reality you are having so much of problems at home where you are not able to come on time probably uh, you don't have a mom probably your dad is unwell and you are the single person who has to arrange everything for your dad and then come to work but what is happening when you are coming to work you are happy you are cheerful so what does your manager your team leader thinks your manager and your team leader is actually thinking okay this person is wantedly coming late now even when he is asking you or inquiring what is the reason are you facing any problems you perceive that the manager will have a very negative uh, thought feel about you so you don't want to tell you, hey, your problems to that person so what What is it? All this is your personal barriers or your personal things which you don't feel like communicating, which is causing a distance between your supervisor and your subordinate, and it internally it affects your work. 
The third one is lack of proper incentives. At the end of the day, every person feels happy personally only if you are paid proper salary or bonus or incentives. Now imagine your organization is not paying you properly. Will you feel motivated to work? You would not feel motivated to work. The subordinates will feel very sad to come and work. And in the same time, you will not feel like speaking to your manager or your team leader. Why? Because you will feel that anger within you. Why? Because for the work that you are doing, you are not being paid properly. So this is a reason of lack of proper incentives where the employee is feeling very sad. He doesn't feel like working. He is not willing to even give good suggestions to the organization for improvement. So I know today was a quite a long uh, session that we had probably 35 minutes, but it was a very interesting session. How much of our examples I could include and I could make the session interesting. I have made it. Please ensure that you are going through the videos, subscribe, like, and please ensure you're passing it to how many people you can so that it's useful for the others also. Okay, so stay happy and ensure that you're going through this session and any, uh, any comments that you want to give me, it would be good so that I would be motivated enough to teach you better. Thank you so much.